the last thing I want to talk about, and it's something that's kind of a memorial, but some but of a person who we like who passed away a couple of years ago, but we only recently learned of it, which is something that's always you know it's it's a weird thing to talk about. And it's probably a person a lot of the newer fandom doesn't know who he is. Um, but he's someone who really was a staple of the Transformer fandom if you were a fan during those 90s era and going to Bacons during that 90s era. Um, Joe Ibe, uh, we recently found out, passed away in 2012. Now, who is Joe Ibe? Really, like a lot of people are like, oh, who, who's Joe Ibe? Uh, Joe Ibe um, was pretty much one of the pioneers of cosplay in the Transformer fandom. If he, if if not the pioneer of of cosplay uh, in the Transformer fandom, um, Joe was born uh, in December seventeenth, nineteen sixty six. You know, he's not not a, a young cat like a lot of us Transformer fans that were born in the seventies and the eighties. Uh, he was a he was a sixties kid, and he was someone who at a young age um, was big into cosplay and costume stuff and because he was born in, in Willows uh, California so he was right there you know when he hit his, his late teens early 20s he was right there at the heart of SDCC when it was first starting up so and not to mention just the budding California convention scene to begin with so he was someone who was right there on the ground floor when cosplay was just starting to become a thing in those early conventions back in the day. And um, Joe was someone that, I mean, I, I could just like go through his list of cosplay and like, you know, he used to hear SDCC. Uh, well, even, man, it goes really back, but I well, mean. Which one was the most famous one you would say? Well, the most famous the one. Most iconic. The, one, he, yes. For people who might know who he is, even if they might have seen just an image, there's two images of Joe that kind of surface around, and it's kind of like unflattering to him. Joe was a larger man. He was a, an, a, a larger individual. And there's this one photo of him in his Optimus Prime cosplay, but he doesn't have his helmet on. So it just kind of looks like this, because Joe has a very, like, fat man face face he has a very fat pronounced chin and so you have this fat face and this fat head on this optimus prime body and it's like so many people would this this is like that's like the the photo that circulates everywhere of him and people have made fun of it and, 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 and the second one that a lot of people know him for is the metal hawk guy which was and that's what he was his name was for the longest time was the metal hawk guy or the optimus prime guy within the fandom was because he had he was like one of the first people to uh, to pretty much cosplay as a Transformer. In BotCon 1997 in Anaheim, he cosplayed as Metalhawk. And it got the attention of like everybody because it's like, wow, who is he cosplaying? Because Metalhawk has these like Optimus Prime kind of colors to him. And everyone's like, is it Optimus Prime? Why does he have a sword? What's the story with the fin on the head? And you know, and, and but the Japanese guys uh, Azusa and a lot of them, they know exactly who he was cosplaying. And they took photos with him and he ended up being in a magazine back in Japan. And like, he was this big revolutionary dude for cosplay. And, and that metal hawk that he wore at BACON 97, he would wear it at SCCC 97. He'd wear it at SCCC 98, 99. Um, he was actually on ETV with Julie uh, Ten Tenuta. Um, who's some kind of actress or something from e from uh, ETV, where he was in that cosplay and stuff. Uh, in the end, it ended up falling apart, according to him. Um, he said that it just fell apart after, because it's all made out of cardboard and stuff. But then uh, at other conventions, like, again, that famous Optimus Prime one that, he, that he's so known for, uh, it actually had a matrix in the chest, too, which no one has ever seen photos of that, but I, the chest actually opens up and had a matrix inside it. And he wore that to a whole bunch of other local conventions. He wore it to SDCC 1998 also, uh, Baycon 2000, Fan, Fan, Fanime 1999. Like, he wore that all over the place. He did a um, a, a Godmaster Chief Giga, a Giga from Giga and Mega of Overlord. He was the just the Power Master, Godmaster Giga. He wore that to SACCon 2000, 2006 in June. 
he used to he actually made fan characters and then he would so he had like chronobot which was he was a big doctor who fan so he did the sixth doctor which was i think colin baker as a transformer <laughs> you know from from the tardis and all that crazy stuff and again, SDCC, he wore that. He did, he did a whole fanfic about it. He was a creative guy. He did a lot of video stuff. He did a lot of fanfic writing. He did a lot of art. He was an artist too. Um, and he was just cosplay across the stream. And again, this guy was revolutionary. I mean, today, we look at TFCon, we look at BACon, and all the great cosplay that we see today. You know, with 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 the talented people and the easy the ease of, of materials to get today, and and the the huge community and the ease of communication for cosplay ideas and sharing your cosplay with photos. He was doing this with cardboard found at the back of restaurants, you know, duct tape, and just his own imagination and a non-existent community forum to to yeah. to be creative imagine when he was making that godmaster stuff and all he probably was working on was like bad jpeg files and vhs's you yeah, know geez, that's true you know think about because what did what did he have of of metal hawk what's, to, what's what's references yeah you know? because i'm pretty sure he didn't have the metal hawk toy back then you know maybe he did maybe not but it's just it's 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 craziness and you you kind of like dig deeper into stuff like he even said that he did a Rekgar that actually transformed but there's just no photos of it that anyone has um, he did a Star Saber one which was amazing which actually had the sword and everything um, he said that he met Seth Green went before Seth Green was huge and stuff uh, and they actually have a photo together of him in his Optimus Prime outfit so it's like you know, again like Mr. Robot Chicken and uh Family Guy and everything before he was even parodying Transformers and stuff. He met, you know, he met uh, this dude, you know, and it's just it's 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 absolutely crazy stuff. Like it's he was he was a revolutionary dude, and it's it's such a shame that so many people don't know who he is, um, and don't know just how much of an impact he'd made on the transforming cosplay community before it became huge. And he, and it's sad because ultimately in the end, you know, he, he only really did cosplay and transformer conventions in the West coast. And the last time he was ever at a BotCon, which was according to super Megatron, who's like part of TFCon staff. He's one of the head dudes. Um, according to him, he said the last time he saw Joe was BotCon 2009. I don't even remember Joe, from 2009 and beyond all the West Coast BACons. Like, I just remember Joe being... But then, you know, he kind of fell into obscurity. We never see him ever again. Cosplayers come out of the woodworks now post-2007. Um, and then we only find out recently that he passed away November 6, 2012. Yeah. You know, in, in quietly in his home due to health complications. And... Uh, it was uh, it was pretty much it was, it was you know I, I found it out just because doing research on him because I was going to kind of work on an article with with cosplay stuff and everything and doing research on him and then finding his obituary and then doing backward searching from that and it was you know it's it's a shame but it was just like you know it's, it, this guy was was pretty darn cool and it's it's funny because I I read into his history and stuff and because he lived in Cali. Um, he actually, his father knew Tom Hanks's dad, and apparently, like Tom Hanks's dad and his dad were good friends, and apparently, like he dated his Tom Hanks's aunt <laughs> at some point, his dad. So it, it's funny because it, it, again, that's the whole California bubble over there. Yeah, you know, like and he tried, he tried to get into the film industry, and he went to film school. Uh, the funny thing is, and this is the beauty with the internet, at least, his YouTube account still exists to this day, um, and has a lot of his uh, just homemade, like DVR home video stuff that he was doing, and a lot of it was him. He liked to do. Uh, he would take Weird Al Yankovic music and make his own music videos. Mm -hmm. So he did like you know there was a Weird Al Yankovic song, which is the Happy Birthday one. And uh, he did he did a music video of that. He was he seemed like a very like talented dude who worked with what he had back then. I mean, us today we could just get a, an HD camera and film like great stuff. All of this stuff was was pre-internet, 
and everything that he shared on his YouTube and everything was like that pre-internet era DVR cam. Like he did another thing too on his YouTube channel. He did his own dubbing of anime, like his own no dubbing of of like anime that didn't have sub like didn't have a dubbed version. He was dubbing uh, Yurusei Yatsura, which was one of the creator of Ranma's other series. Mm -hmm. uh, he was dubbing that stuff. He was you know doing a lot of like. Uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 kind of dubbing for some stuff too, like a comedy kind of dubbing. Um, but yeah, he was he was a revolutionary dude. Um, his a lot of his website stuff, it's still out there on archive. His YouTube channel is still active, so you could still check that out if you want to see some of some of his creations. If you type Joe Ibe, or specifically his his screen name in the fandom was. Uh, Ephesus, it's kind of hard to pronounce, but I'll I'll write it in the uh, description of the of the video. Um, you could find a lot of his cosplay, and there's there's more than like 50 photos of all his different cosplay and stuff. And like in the later of his career, he stopped cosplaying and he started helping other people with cosplay. So he did like a Lady Valkyrie with one person. He started doing a lot of uh, cosplay uh, photo shoots for people so he'd do photography for them because again it comes from that film background yeah he, he did a lot of photography stuff and he just you know he was a busy guy he was he was always part of the trans masters mail list which was like one of the first mail listings for transformer fans back in the day mm -hmm. he was a, a a pretty crazy awesome dude and it's it's a shame that he he passed away so early because he seemed like a very talented individual and and i saw him from far away back in the day like those early Bacons in the early 2000s. I saw him from far away, never approached him, never took photos, and then he just kind of just disappeared because he never went to any of the other Bacon shows if they weren't West Coast. So right. it's a shame. It's a shame. So he'll, Joe, you will be missed, man. Like he, You were a talented dude, and I wanted to do this video because no one knew that he existed in a majority of the fandom, and a lot of them didn't even know when he, like people who did know him, didn't even know he passed away. So I just wanted to just bring that up. Happy trails, man. Yeah, awesome guy.